We're going to move on to their next lesson about identities. These are called the sum, difference, and double angle identities. So if you're interested in the proofs of the sum identities, please watch the following videos. The sum identities, the reason why they're called sum identities is because they're the sum of two angles. So alpha and beta are two angles, and the sine of alpha plus beta is given by the first identity, that is sine of alpha plus beta is equal to sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. The second sum identity is the cosine of alpha plus beta, that is going to be equal to the cosine of alpha plus the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. Last but not least is the sum identity for the sum of two angles for tangent. So the tangent of alpha plus beta is going to be equal to the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of beta divided by the divided by one minus uh, tangent alpha Um, times tangent to beta. So in reality, I have my formula sheet beside me. I have my formula sheet with all of my identities on it. And this is what I'm going to use to navigate the questions. Here are three of them. And if I'm ever going to use the identities, I have to refer to my sheets because these are just too crazy for me to memorize uh, maybe with a few years practice. But we can even extend this further. Some simple facts. Cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of negative theta. That is, for instance, 45 and, sorry, negative 45 degrees and 45 degrees will have the same cosine value. I'm just going to pop over to Desmos to say, Take a look, pick any angle. So like 180. What you'll recognize, this is the cosine graph. The cosine of 180 is the same as the cosine for negative 180. So this one is kind of nice. Now, what we know here, this one says something different. So the sine of negative theta is going to be equal to the negative sine of theta. So the sine value of a negative angle is the negative sine ratio with the positive angle. Again, this becomes more evident when we take a look at the sine curve here. So if you take a look at the sine of negative 90, what you can see is that value is negative 1. However, the sine of 90 is going to be 1. So again, the sine of negative theta is going to be equal to the negative sine of theta. So this is true for all theta. Now, you don't need to know that but it's evident when you look at the graphs. But you can use these simple um, facts to obtain different identities. Now, these are called the difference identities. So the sine of alpha minus beta is equal to sine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. Cosine of alpha minus beta is going to be equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. And similarly, we have the tangent uh, difference identity. I don't think it's particularly useful that I'm talking them out to you or anything like that. Um, but these are called the difference identities. You have them on a piece of paper. We're going to use them. And it's hard to describe when we're going to use them, but 
hopefully we'll see some examples. Now, if you want, you can consider the sums, identities. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to equate beta to alpha. So, for instance, if I have alpha plus beta, and really beta is the same as alpha, I really would have two alphas. So this is called double angle identities. So the sine of two alpha is equal to two sine alpha, cosine theta, or cosine alpha. Have similarly have a double angle identity for cosine and tangent. So our next video, we're going to be taking a look at applying these identities.